Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. lecture number 20 uh, we have been discussing about the rigid body dynamics so we will continue with that and uh, due course of uh, our uh, analysis we saw that the inertia matrix emerged and uh, we need to know some of the properties of the inertia matrix because that will be helpful in discussing various problems so uh, let us look into the inertia matrix the equation that we have written this was written as rho square i minus rho times rho tilde times rho tilde transpose and uh, times d m. Okay. So, uh, you know that if I am given a positive uh, definite matrix, then this property x transpose a, if this is a symmetric positive definite matrix, then this must hold okay this quantity will be greater than 0 okay so let us say that for this uh, vi we use this type of notation u tilde trans u tilde transpose u tilde why we write it like this so if we operate on this particular one take it inside. So, if we take it inside, so this will be rho a square u tilde transpose rho times rho transpose u tilde u is an arbitrary matrix which is not depending on m. Okay. So, if we look for this quantity this is vector u and this is vector rho tilde. So, the angle between these two u tilde transpose rho this we can write as u tilde magnitude times rho tilde magnitude and say the angle between these two vectors it happens to be gamma. So, we can write it as cos gamma okay. and therefore, this quantity here on the right hand side it can be written as u tilde magnitude square times rho tilde magnitude time square times cos square gamma okay. and this is d m on the left hand side and this rho tilde magnitude this is nothing but this rho. So, here we have on the left hand side u tilde transpose times i and here one more part we are missing. So, u tilde is coming from this place. So, we need to put that also. So, we have i matrix here identity matrix times u tilde. Okay. So, this also constitutes the this is T, this is the transpose which is on here, here in this place. Okay. So, i times u tilde is nothing but u tilde and therefore, u tilde transpose times u tilde that is equal, equal to u tilde magnitude square. So, these two are the these two terms this term and this term they are the same term okay. this is integration. So, what we see here this is rho a square and if we write this as u tilde magnitude u tilde magnitude equal to u. So, this we can write as 1 minus cos a square gamma d m Okay. And this quantity is this equal to rho a square u a square sin a square gamma d m and therefore, rho a square rho times u sin gamma a square d m. And this is always a positive quantity. So, this is going to be greater than 0 until unless until unless 
sin gamma equal to 0 for all the particles of that mass. And that is a very extreme case that is a limiting case which will happen only if your u tilde vector along the u tilde vector your all masses are linearly if this is your u tilde vector. So, all masses are located along this direction itself then only this vanishes. So, in that case the angle between these two will vanish ok u tilde and rho uh, u tilde and rho tilde vector say here the we, we have written in terms of sin gamma. So, sin gamma means you are putting this gamma equal to 0 ok means this vector and this vector the rho vector. So, both are aligned and because this vector is arbitrary rho, rho tilde is arbitrary your sorry this u tilde is your arbitrary vector ok you have taken on your own ok. So, that means the vector you have taken along that direction itself this rho vector is lying. So, rho vector is also lying here in this direction and this integration is over all the particles that means that all the particles are lying over this line only means if I have this u tilde vector along this direction. So, all your particles are concentrating concentrating over this line only ok. So, this is a very extreme distribution and only for that case this will turn out to be equal to 0 otherwise it will never be 0 this will be always positive definite. Okay. So, uh, we uh, note down the following uh, properties of the inertia matrix which will be helpful uh, due course of time. Inertia matrix this is the real symmetric matrix. So, basically these are the what I am going to write it is the properties of the real symmetric matrix and because our inertia matrix also is a real symmetric matrix and therefore, all those properties will apply. Eigen values of a real symmetric matrix are real because your inertia it cannot be uh, complex quantity okay, it is a physical quantity. Okay. can be chosen to be real matrix can be chosen to be real. So, the Eigen vectors uh, we can also choose them to be real it is written like this Eigen vectors as one term Eigen values as one term. Okay, and this has significance that if my Eigen vectors are real symmetric uh, of a real symmetric matrix can be chosen to be real means the Eigen vectors they indicate here in this case the directions ok and here for this particular case they indicate the principal axis direction uh, as we will see later on. So, uh, moreover every real symmetric matrix
So, uh, this has got complete set of the uh, orthonormal Eigen vectors matrix. ortho real symmetric matrix is also diagonalizable you can diagonalize it okay and this is very important because if we can diagonalize so we can get the principal moment of inertia For uh, for every real symmetric matrix A, there exists a real orthogonal matrix. Already we have studied about what is the orthogonal matrix. So there exists a real orthogonal matrix M such that. M transpose, I will not put this uh, bracket where D is a diagonal matrix. Means, if we operate on this A matrix or the inertia matrix, I matrix, I can convert it to a diagonal matrix, and it is very important. is called the m is called a modal matrix and if its entries if we normalize okay, then uh, we get the columns of the of the modal matrix m are the eigen vectors of a if it is able to diagonalize a then this these are the eigen vectors of a okay uh, so in the orthonormal form let us say that uh, i have this a matrix and this operates on some vector nu okay and this eigen value problem we write it like this okay so here this nu tilde this appears as the eigen vector and if we normalize this eigen vector normalize it means we convert it to a unit vector that is convert to a unit vector then its components they indicate then the components this will indicate the direction cosines let us say that uh, i omega we have written earlier okay so obviously i is a matrix where the you have the i11 i12 i13 all these terms are there okay and then you have omega 1 omega 2 omega 3 and what you are looking for that instead of this okay if it can be reduced to a form where 
i is a scalar okay or instead of writing this i i will write in terms of lambda if it can be written like this so can we find a situation or the axis where the rotation can be represented at this this is your h vector so the h vector or the h tilde can it be rotated represented it like this so this simply indicates that if your h vector if you are writing as h1 times c1 cap h2 times c2 cap h3 times c3 cap means in your body frame this is the e frame and this is e1 direction e2 direction e3 direction okay so in this frame you are taking the components of the h vector this is your h vector okay so take components along this direction so you can write it like this similarly omega you can write at omega 1 e1 cap omega 2 e2 cap plus omega 3 e3 cap okay so in general this h and omega 1 they are not parallel okay we go to the next page say even if we have this kind of situation i1 i2 i3 and here we have omega 1 omega 2 omega 3 and this is your h which you can write as i1 times omega 1 i2 times omega 2 i3 times omega 3 and in vector notation the same thing you can write as this is the first term h1 so h1 equal to i1 times omega 1 times e1 cap the second term this is your h2 this is h2 this is h1 this is h3 omega 2 e2 cap plus e3 cap while your omega vector we have written as e2 cap plus omega 3 e3 cap what we can see that these two vectors can not be parallel because of the presence of these terms so even if we you consider a uh, inertia matrix where the off diagonal terms are zero in that case h and omega in general so we can state that in general they are not parallel in general h is not parallel to omega so what can be that situation where h and omega they are parallel okay so if h and omega they are parallel means you should be able to show it like this this is your i matrix okay i times omega or uh, writing the same term same thing like this this is your omega vector i matrix omega vector or uh, omega matrix this is a column matrix basically so instead of uh, telling column matrix i will always speak this as the vector this is much better than us speaking it as a column matrix so when this situation will arise that i omega will be equal to lambda times omega so if this situation arises so this simply implies that we are looking for a condition where h and omega they are parallel to each other means if you look here in this side so if, uh, i1 omega 1 i2 omega 2 so we write this term as i times omega tilde minus lambda i now this is the unit matrix lambda i times omega tilde so if you write it this way we can see that this is lambda times lambda i tilde lambda times this identity matrix so this is indicating basically your eigen value problem so rotation if the rotation happens along a particular principal axis 
only then this situation will be satisfied or as earlier we have discussed that uh, or let us say that uh, this is my the first axis uh, second axis and the third axis and this is the principal axis first principal axis second axis principal axis and this is the third principal axis so this kind of notation we can have only in the case where rotation itself is along one of the principal axis otherwise we cannot get this okay so if, uh, if we write it in this way so if, uh, let us say that you have a x equal to lambda x and then you are writing this as lambda and this is the identity matrix lambda x equal to 0 and then you are solving it so the same thing this is the eigen value problem so the, here also this is the eigen value problem so if you try to solve this problem so in that case for the non trivial solution we look for the non trivial solution means omega tilde this is not zero it's a not a zero vector so we'll particularly explore this expression so what we see that for our problem to be traceable this must be singular okay so for non trivial solution determinant of this must vanish this implies that this must be singular only then the determinant will vanish okay and then this lambda i tilde if you set it to zero so you can solve for lambda so you get three values for lambda say this is lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 okay. and these three values they will indicate the three principal moments of inertia so the three principal moments of inertia it can happen that all of them like they are lambda 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 all of them are same ok that happens in the case of the sphere where all the moment of inertia along all the uh, perpendicular direction all the three perpendicular direction whichever you choose it happens to be the same ok now here this omega tilde which is appearing this is your eigen vector ok so for each of the eigen value you can solve for this eigen vector and then this eigen vector this indicates the direction of the principal or the principal moment direction so if we, we have the lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 so taking this lambda 1 we can solve this so one value we will have to assume the rest other two we can solve for and if it is repeating so you have to apply uh, the uh, process for solving um, eigen vector getting eigen vectors for the repeated eigen values and uh, you can look uh, for that technique in the book the crazy engineering matrix mathematics by crazy okay. so this omega then corresponding to this lambda 1 what you get corresponding to this lambda 1 the omega tilde that you get this gives you the eigen vector which locates the first principal moment of inertia direction ok similarly from lambda to you will get omega tilde uh, so for this omega tilde now omega tilde 
as a whole if you look it may not be a unit vector if it is not a unit vector just normalize it okay so each component of this omega tilde then uh, omega tilde the next one let us say for uh, i will write it in the exponent terms not to indicate these are the components of omega but rather these are the eigen vectors themselves okay similarly for lambda 3 is omega tilde 3 so the components of this omega tilde they will be cos alpha cos beta and cos gamma these are the direction cosines and cos alpha times cos beta square times cos gamma square as we have discussed uh, in our rotation cos alpha square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma this will be equal to 1 once you have normalized it so the normal normalized omega tilde which is the eigen vector here in this case it will indicate the direction cosines of the principal direction so let us get into this through a figure say if, uh, i know the mass distribution with respect to this axis e1 e2 e3 where we have all i1 i12 i13 i21 i22 i23 and i31 i32 and i33 all of them are available to us okay thereafter by doing this operation this solving for the eigen values we get to this point okay that is we solve for eigen values and the eigen vectors so if this is my omega 1 so omega 1 will have components i can indicate it by say omega alpha 1 beta 1 gamma 1 similarly for this we can write here as alpha 2 beta 2 gamma 2 so this eigen vector so now i have the principal direction let us say this is the first principal direction and i will indicate this as e1 may be prime okay so if i indicate by e1 prime so the angle from here this will be your alpha 1 this angle will be beta 1 and this angle will be gamma 1 and then the cos alpha 1 cos beta 1 and cos gamma 1 this is your corresponding eigen vector here okay normalized eigen vector so this normalized eigen vector it locates the orientation of the or it uh, if uh, it is just about the orientation of your principal axis direction okay similarly you have the second direction let us say it is along this one so this is your e2 prime so th the same way the angle from here to here this will be alpha 2 from this place to this place this will be beta 2 and from here to here this will be beta 3 and in the same way then you can take the third direction which is e 3 prime. So, e 3 prime you take the angle from this place to this place this will be your gamma 3 from here to here this angle will be your uh, alpha alpha 3 okay. and from this axis the angle will be uh, I, I cannot show it here now uh, this will be beta 3. So, this way all your principal axis direction principal moment of a inertia axis direction they get located okay so if i write here i1 i2 and i3 as the principal moment of inertia then this indicates that you are taking along this axis i1 about this axis i2 about this axis and i3 about this axis and the mass distribution with respect to this new axis i1 e1 prime e2 prime and e3 prime it is such that all the off diagonal terms i12 i21 i31 i13 i23 and i31 these are all equal to 0 okay they vanish so mass distribution then with respect to this axis it becomes such that those terms are vanishing and uh, this is quite often done that uh, uh, once uh, say you have a satellite and you want to get its uh, mom moment of inertia so first you will uh, you have a big satellite okay so there are different components inside so you will calculate there are software available 
or either you can do it yourself each component you have certain mass so you first choose certain point and from that point then you can calculate the moment of, uh, moment of inertia of the each of the component so this using the parallel axis theorem you can calculate the moment of inertia of each of the component and you can build the moment of inertia for the whole system and once you have got the moment of inertia for the whole system which is looking like this so in that case thereafter you can reduce it to the format by considering the eigen value problem and uh, you can get here lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 and also the principal axis direction and once you get the principal axis direction so you can work with then uh, i1 i2 i3 instead of working with this whole matrix because this is very easy to handle in controls ra rather than handling this particular part okay so uh, so uh, this is about the uh, moment of inertia consideration uh, and uh, a lot more can be discussed but uh, we have limited number of lectures only 30 lectures uh, for this particular course and uh, already we have covered around uh, 10 lectures that uh, lecture number 20 it's a half of an hour so total 10 hours we have uh, covered so rest 20 hours we are having in hand to cover the uh, dynamics part so i will not go de in details of this moment of inertia rather you look into the engineering mechanics book by erwin sims or either by beer johnston in both the books it's uh, given in great details so uh, after reading this uh, you will be able to solve certain problems so th th this particular uh, course i am concentrating on the dynamics and controls of the satellite i will discuss more in more details the dynamics and to some extent the controls because dynamics itself it takes a lot of time so we continue in the next lecture thank you very much